For this interview edition of Monica at Home, I hit the road and ventured about seven hours north of Las Vegas to reach the small town of Battle Mountain, Nevada. When most people think of the Nevada legal brothel system, they automatically think of Dennis Hoff and his bunny ranch. Well, as you'll quickly learn from Jennifer O'Kane, owner and operator of the Calico Club Brothel, there's much more to the Nevada legal brothel system and the truth of Dennis Hoff than the mainstream media has presented to the public as of yet. All right, everyone, welcome once again to another Monica at Home interview, but for once, I am not at home. I'm actually out and about. And today, I am here with the lovely Jennifer. Hi. And Jennifer is the owner and operator of the Calico Club Brothel here in Battle Mountain, Nevada. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I am great. Thank you so much for inviting me up here and for um, being as hospitable as you've been. Thank you. And for showing me around. You know, um, I am going to splice in a lot of different photos and everything I've taken of this place. But um, this is actually a historic building. Tell me a little bit about the history of this building, Jennifer. The brothel was put here in 1920, and it became the legal house of prostitution in 1970. 1970. And before it became a house of legal prostitution, it actually was a mining house. That's interesting. Where it boarded miners, because in Battle Mountain, where I'm like, I'm going in those areas, they deal with the mines, the gold, the silver, the underground, and that's what we live in right in Wyoming. Okay. And so that's what that house is. Probably. And they made it a legal house. Great. So, um, how did you, just you yourself, get into the adult entertainment industry? Tell me your history in your journey through adult entertainment. Um, I was married, I had a pretty violent marriage and left him in November of 2010. And you no, know, I went to a brothel, actually I went to a friend's house and she's like, well, what are you gonna do? And I was like, I don't know, I'm not bondable anymore. I have seizures. Uh, I can't be in the car business anymore. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I tried to do a waitressing job, tried to go to the Spearmint Rhino is a stripper. Okay. Um, so you're in great shape, and everyone check out this woman's body. She's in really great shape. <laughs> uh, but I had never done it before, so they would not hire me. I wanted to be a cocktail waitress, so they wouldn't hire me because they said that I would cost them money if I spilled a drink. Wow. So I was like, okay, what do I do? So my girlfriend said, I put your application into a ranch. And I said, what's a ranch? She said, a brothel. And I said, what the hell's a brothel? Sorry. And uh, she said, prostitution. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm much better than that. I am not going to be a prostitute. There's no way. And she's like, you're beautiful. You're young. Go date. You get sex. Safe environment. And the gates are safe. No one's going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I went to the ranch. Okay. Um, saw some really, really, really bad things. Experienced some really, really bad things. Um, started off with Brum, and met a gentleman January 23rd of 2011. Okay, let me rewind. My legal, my first night um, of illegal prostitution in the range was January, New Year's Eve of 2011. Okay. I met a man um, out of lineup uh, January 23rd of 2011. Okay. My last party was May 28th. 2011, okay. and I bought this place in 2000, May, uh, May 6th of 2011. So everything was 2011? Yes, it's a big year. What sparked the idea for you to open your own establishment? Um, I saw a lot of drugs, um, abuse, I saw a lot of alcoholism, I saw a lot of games, a lot of mental, physical abuse in the brothels. So you wanted to make it better? I wanted to show the girls that they didn't have to sleep with the owner. They didn't have to be verbally abused, physically abused by the other girls, um, threatened. And so I take girls that are off the street. Uh, a lot of them have STDs mm -hmm. when they come in. And so I clean them up, I help them, and a lot of them get away from pimps. Um, and some of them clean up their lives. That's good. Yeah. I think you're a little bit more than just a brothel owner. Not to say just, because there's not very many, but I think that you're doing a bit more than that by helping people the way you're doing. I bought this place, and it's in writing with Lambert County, that 
to help people. Right. I'm not here to make a lot of money. I don't make a lot of money at all. Right. Um, this is not what I got into this business for. And I look right in the camera to say that because it's very, very important for people to understand that girls on the street that are getting raped and robbed um, are forced to do things that they don't want to do. Yeah. So when I bought this place, I tore down all the gates. I put all the locks inside the house so the girls could unlock their own doors. The staff can't tell them that they can stay because there is no staff. The girls are their staff. Okay. Um, the girls do their own bartending. The girls answer their own door. This is their house. This is a true house of an independent contractor. Okay, so you're allowing complete self-regulation. That's what it sounds like Correct. to me. Except basic rules, no smoking in the house. Mm -hmm. They can't go into each other's room without permission and the, and the girl must be there. But just basic professional courtesy. Okay. Outside of that, yeah. Now, what is your favorite part of being a brothel owner and working in a brothel? <clears throat> Satisfaction. Okay. Um, I see a lot of young ladies clean up their life. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of customers that come in and like the fact that it's a non-smoking, that it's friendly, that it's a real independent contractor's house. Mm -hmm. um, I get a lot of satisfaction every day. What has been the biggest obstacle for you? Dennis Hoff. Let's talk about Dennis Hoff a little bit, as much as you're comfortable with it. Okay. Um, how did you initially come across Dennis Hoff? That was the brothel that I started at. I started um, off in Peru at okay. the uh, Love, Love Ranch when he got the keys. He actually, I was there when they handed him the keys to the brothel. And uh, I saw some really bad things he did to me personally. Okay. He did some things to other girls. Um, Do you want to be specific or? He, yeah. Okay. Dennis Hoff took me and in my opinion, raped me. Okay. Um, and I say the rate of rape because I didn't know I could say no. And Dennis Hoff looked at me and said that was I, this was his. And, and I, not right. to listen. And coming from a marriage and not ever being in this industry, I didn't know. So I thought, okay, I'm in my late 40s. I'm a grown woman. I can figure this out. Then he did some things without... <clears throat> uh, Dennis Hoff didn't use a condom. Really? And he angled me, and he vaginally, and he doesn't use a condom with any of the girls to the best of my knowledge, but I know that he didn't use one with me. Okay. And when I was at the Prump Ranch, they, my medical came back and it came back positive. I had just came back clear the week before. I only slept with two people at the Prump because it wasn't really busy. Mm -hmm. And, um, then they retested me and it came back positive and the management came to me and horrified me saying that I was doing breaking the law, that I was not using condoms, that I was not doing things that were legal. And who had I slept with with no condom? And I said, the only person that I slept with with no condom was Dennis Hall. At that point it was, oh, he sleeps with everybody. I said, okay, well, I didn't know that I, was he? So they retested me and they contacted Dennis and Dennis had to get tested and, and he got all mad and upset and said that I lied and this and so that was my beginning of my nightmare. That would be a nightmare for anybody. It was. And yeah. so I got moved from Pahrump because the staff found out, the girls found out and he had been intimate with another girl there so there was a big major problem because that was her daddy and my dad raised me just fine i didn't need a daddy and i made that yeah. very clear and so madam diane was there um at the time and uh they moved me up to mount house okay um and dennis the night that i got there took me as i say took me um he had his driver come and get me mm -hmm. and i had to go to his bungalow and there were some things that he did there that, um, not just sex, um, that he did. And then uh, he continued doing that. Um, and then he took me to his personal ranch and did some things to me there. And I found out um, that I didn't have to do these things. And so I told Dennis I didn't want to do these things. 
What was his reaction when you told him that? I got beat up by three girls and there's a police report proving it. Oh gosh. Um, I can name names because they're actually in the police report. Jazzy Jones, um, Lucy Fire. Okay. Those are their working names, but they work for Dennis. And so that is the reason that I left Dennis's house. And I was dating a man and he asked me what I wanted to do with my life. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to show girls that they don't have to go through this abuse, physical and emotional abuse. That's excellent. Um, so he said, go buy a bra. So everybody calls him my sugar daddy, but he's not. He doesn't come into the brothel. The girls don't meet him. He doesn't come into my strip, my strip club. Um, he's my pillow. This is someone who decided to help you. Yes. I met, him, I, I met him as a customer. Mm -hmm. um, I've had many girls meet wonderful people as customers, and there's nothing wrong with that. I was a dancer for many years, as many of my viewers know, yeah. so I know how that is. And you can't stop feelings and emotions. No. You can't. And so a lot of my girls have met wonderful people and left and have lives with them now. And you don't try to stop them from leaving. No. To have lives. No. I've heard some horror stories in regards to Ha. I am dealing I with mean, them personally. Yeah. Um, the, the, the gentleman that I am with now, um, I can't really, I can't give him give his name because of the safety. Right. Um, he has hurt other people and gone after other people's livelihoods. Okay. Um, because girls have tried to get out of the business, I can't mention names. Mm -hmm. um, but girls have been hurt and they have to run. And I know Cami Parker. I know these girls personally. I know the drugs. I know the abuse. He said it in his own book, so it's not denying anything that I'm saying. Right. Um, he also said on national TV that if you had 31 flavors, wouldn't you want to try them all? But what he doesn't tell people is that we don't have a choice. I've contacted the police department. I've contacted Lyon County. I've contacted Perone. It's, I've even contacted Dennis and said, Dennis, you know, this is wrong. And he will not confront me. Well, as you know, you are not the only one. I just recently did the interview with um, Sunset Thomas about some horrific events that happened to her. Also, um, Diana, also known as Desi Fox, who very briefly worked for Dennis. She had a very bad experience. So it seems to me like at this time, the truth is coming out. You know, the whole Lamar Odom thing that happened. There oh, a lot of, um, well, what's your take on that? I have a big take on that. I'm getting lots of interviews um, due to that because I feel as an ex-prostitute and always a working girl, mm -hmm. we don't give up our, our customers' names. Confidentiality is 100% in the brothel industry, in the sex industry, legal or illegal. And Dennis is, oh, well, that's the illegal world. We, no, our customers come to the brothel for confidentiality and or they go to an escort they go either way it is still the confidentiality and for, for i would dennis, think that's what you're paying for privacy yes you yeah. know for dennis to do that to an individual rather it's lamar odin or anybody is is horrifying to me do you think he just wanted the uh free press yes that's what i think yes and the other thing is is that i'm very angry that he put out there that a transgender could bend with him in any way shape or form right um, there's pictures of the correspondence back and forth. Um, that's not allowed in this house. And those are one of my basic simple rules and, and they're hung up in the kitchen. Uh, you, there is no exchange of phone numbers with customers. Give them the house phone number. Right. The house phone number is for the girls' business. Okay. The cell phones is ex exactly what just happened. Corresponding with a customer is supposed to be confidential. Yeah. The other thing is, is Dennis lied. Dennis lied to the world in regards to having transgenders. This house in Lander County was the first house in 2013 that legalized transgenders in my house. Really? Yes. And That's I interesting. Yes. That's very interesting. So, so you're you're the historic house that has done this. And I contacted not his. Okay. Yes, and I contacted the newspaper. Okay. I asked for a rebuttal. The young lady that the transgender was here in 2013 actually got on and said, no, Dennis was lying as well. Okay. Um, the transgender community 
um, is mad, did not know, but I didn't, and, they, and I got asked this question, <clears throat> why didn't I notify? Why am I now just coming out? Why people in Elko don't even know that the Calico Club is here? Okay. The CDC didn't even know that we were really out here. Now they get records of all the problems. Okay. But we don't have STDs right. um, that go. Uh, so we're a very quiet problem. Right. Yeah. Why I'm coming public now mm -hmm. is because a man that calls himself a pimp. <clears throat> Number one, it's Oh, he doesn't want to call himself a pimp anymore, by the way. Oh. So are you a pimp? I'm not a pimp. So are you a pimp? I'm not a pimp. So are you a pimp? I'm not a pimp. You were aware of that. Suddenly he doesn't want to be a pimp even though he has a book called The Art of the Pimp. Well, and I have a lot to do with that. I have contacted um, lots of people from the FBI to the local authorities. And Dennis, this is for you if you read this or hear this. I will make sure if there's anything in my power to close your doors, I will do so. You are not a pimp. You cannot be a pimp. It is against the law to be a pimp. And it is in an NRS code that says that you cannot be a pimp. And I and I have rang a lot of bells. Um, I've contacted um, Lyon County person, talking to a detective, um, brought up the NRS codes personally, because a lot of our counties trust us. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have their job to take care of the, the court cards. Uh, to make sure the girls don't have warrants, things like that. This is a bit more of an emotional interview than I anticipated. For those of you watching, you guys all know that I'm a very sensitive and emotional person. Um, what I do want to say is that since I've been here visiting, I have witnessed some beautiful, beautiful things. This woman is more than a brothel owner. This is a woman who has created an absolute safe, place for women who want to work as a legal courtesan, but who don't want to feel that they're walking into a prison. So let's talk a little bit about um, just the legalities of the legal brothel system. Now, we were talking a little bit about work cards. Explain to me the work card system and your policies. Okay. There. When a girl gets legal, they do a doctor um, clearance, and then they go for a work card, mm -hmm. and that's fingerprints, background. The law says that that work card is to go to the girl. They're independent contractors. The house holds them as a convenience. That's it. The Lander County Sheriff's Office has explained that to girls that I have had come in that have experienced the forcefulness of this is mine, you're mine, give me this, I have to have this. Um, and so they work very closely with the girls and I to let them know <clears throat> that they're an independent contractor. This card belongs to them. And if they choose to give it to me, that's fine, but they must return it when they go on vacation or leave the property. Okay. And so I, I allow every girl to be the independent contractor that they are. We follow the laws, the NRS codes to a T. There's no gates. Yes, you were saying that um, here you, you allow the girls to have um, control of locking the doors or having it unlocked. They're not um, pinned in. Like We have no staff here. The girls are their own staff. They cook their own meals. They answer their own door to their guests. They bartend themselves. They all have bartending cards as well as, as working cards. Um, they don't tip out the staff. They, they keep as much money as they can. Um, because that's what the deal is. It's an independent contractor's house. If you were out on the street and you did an extended stay, mm -hmm. you would answer your own door. You would offer your guests something to drink. You would have a little bit of conversation with them and then you would go back. Now, one thing I've heard about um, Dennis Hoff's brothels is that the girls are obligated to go with um, any customer or client who selects them. Is that the same policy here? No. Every girl like can say that. no. Um, I like that a lot. They don't have to wear lingerie. Okay. Uh, they don't have to wear high heels. My only rule in the house is don't wear pajamas, please, and no house slippers. Um, there's a lot of girls that do not do certain uh, men, fat men, dark-skinned men, Asian men. 
um, short men, fat men, whatever. That is their choice to say no. The word no comes from each individual lady. Um, good, good. And that is important in this house. And when I was at a brothel, I had a, a trainer and I was told I was not allowed to say no and that I had to take whatever the customer gave me. Well, I said no to the customer. Well, I'm not gonna do this for this amount because I gotta give this to the house. I've gotta take buy this stuff that leaves me no money. So I'm doing it for a pen. I'm doing it for free. And and I teach the girls that. You're not doing it for anybody but yourself. You're here to make money. You're not here to be my friend. You're not here to live here for the rest of your life. I want you to move on. I want you to be successful. Go to college, get a car, get a house, and be my friend for the rest of my life. That's excellent. That's excellent. Well, like I was saying, um, I feel that Jennifer is a lot more than a brothel owner. This is a woman who's here to help women get themselves together, women who need a safe place to be, for women who want to regain control of their lives, not women. If you're someone who's looking for a daddy, this is not the place to be. <laughs> but if you're looking for a place to um, regain a sense of self, regardless of where you've been in life, I believe that this is an excellent place to come. Now, how can women get in contact with you? They can call the ranch at 775-635-2764 or my cell number. Um, even if it's for questions and you're not sure what you want to do, it's 775-455-7072. Um, we also have a website and it's uh, www.com calico c-a-l-i-c-o club.com all right and i will put all this information you know on my little graphics and everything i'll put it all up here and i will also write an extensive blog about my experience coming to visit but um, everyone you know one thing that i've learned is that when a person is doing really really good things Evil does whatever it possibly can to discredit you and to make people believe the opposite. So, you know, just like there's a lot of negative things out there about me, there's a lot of negative things out there about Jennifer. Don't believe any of it. Come see for yourself. Please do. It's a bit of a drive, but I made it, so I think anyone can make it because I have no sense of direction. It's and, amazing. And, and there's no contracts here. And that's a good thing. Too. There's no contract. So if they don't like it, they don't have to they stay. They can leave. Yeah. And I, I have girls that live in Vegas, that um, live in Elko, that they make their appointments. And as long as they stay doctor, and they do it legal. Good. I experienced a lot of illegal prostitution when I was in the house. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing I am very adamant about. Good. Please don't do that. It's not, it's not beneficial. It may be more money in your pocket now, but it, it's not in the end. So, and there's a lot of times that we don't charge rent. Um, I have young ladies that, you know, may have a bad week and, or a birthday. And I just, I don't need their money. I need them to be successful. I need them to be safe. And if I can help one person, which I have over the four years, then I've done my job. And that's the only reason that I'm here. And just to throw out there, I have written off over $200,000 every single year since I have been here. Um, didn't want to, but I'm going to put that out there. It's, it is a reason that you have to understand that the brothel industry is slow. We have good, we have bad. It's just a fishy thing. But this house will stay open. It is getting cleaned up. Mm -hmm. uh, brand new roof, brand new concrete outside, brand new strip club. Um, that's where my money goes to, is to benefit your house. And we're actually sitting in the strip club right now, and it's really nice. You know, it's under construction, but it's looking good. It's still, it's still working, and the girls are doing it. The girls decorate it. The girls put the, the lights up. They, put, they, they decorate their own house. And it's a good vibe here. It's a very comfortable vibe. It's very down-to-earth. There's no airs being put on or anything. No. You know, and that... And I think the clients would appreciate that as well, right? They do. They like the fact that there's no lineups. They like the fact that there's no smoke. There's no loud music until the strip club's open. Mm -hmm. um, 
we have a jukebox, but they find that, you know what, loud music, let's just meet the girl and have a con be able to have a conversation. It's intimate. It's very intimate. Nice. And they get to know the individual. Yeah. Uh, that has its positives and it has its negatives. Um, you know, the girls get taught to be professional. Uh, you always have a save a hope. Always. So they get taught to learn the difference mm -hmm. um, and be here for a job and make money. That's the main objective is be independent. That is exactly what a working girl is. A courtesan is an independent contractor and that is what you need to be respected as. This is our bodies. Nobody owns our bodies but us. And that's important. That is very important. In fact, that's the most important thing in my opinion. Well, Jennifer, thank you thank so you. much for coming or not coming. I, I came. I'm used to being at home, but um, thank you for um, well, you know, coming on the computer with me. And thanks thank for all of this. And I, I mean, you're extremely impressive. And I just did not expect this at all. So this is what, to me, you're the future of what adult entertainment should be. Try it. So, it absolutely is, is a very good industry. It really is. There's just been a lot of people that have abused it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I believe in change, and change is coming. Change is here. So once again, I'm Alexandra, also known as Monica Foster, and this was a Monica at Home Out and About interview. Thanks, everyone, for lending me your time today.